Welcome back everyone to Montgomery County's Engage at Home. Today we have Sydney Palenkis. Sydney has an amazing presentation. Sydney, would you please introduce yourself? Sure, hi Lily and hi everyone. My name is Sydney Palenkis. I am the Community Outreach and Education Manager for the Elder Safe Center here at Charles E. Smith Life Communities. Thank you, Sydney. I look forward to seeing your presentation. All right, everyone. So in um, honor of National Caregiver Month, I wanna to talk today about self-care and creative mindfulness. So just to start off, I wanna introduce who I am and where I'm coming from. So as I said, I work at the Elder Safe Center here at Charles E. Smith Life Communities. And we help older adults throughout the community in Maryland, DC, and Northern Virginia that are experiencing any form of abuse, neglect, or financial exploitation. So we have a helpline that you are welcome to call if you're ever concerned about someone in your life. And we're also able to provide temporary safe shelter here on our campus, as well as do lots of community education and advocacy for older adults, caregivers, and families. So that's what I want to talk about today, some community education for you all and the importance of self-care for all of us, but especially for caregivers. I know we often think about self-care as extra, right? It's if we have time to do it, it's kind of an indulgence, but I want us to reframe what self-care is and really how important it is. Self-care really needs to be a necessity, right? It has to be something um, that we really prioritize. My mom is a caregiver for my stepdad. Um, and she often, you know, has his appointments on the calendar um, and her self-care time, her walks um, or the things that she does get pushed aside a lot, right? Because they don't seem as important. And I've really been trying to impress this upon her as well, that her self-care needs to be just as important, just as permanent on the calendar as his appointments and the things for him. A lot of times when I talk about elder abuse, people talk about caregiver stress, right? And they think that it's a cause of elder abuse, but really it's not. And in fact, oftentimes when caregivers are too stressed out or have too much going on, they're hurting themselves, right? It's hurting their mental health. It's hurting their physical health. And ultimately, they're not the best caregivers that they want to be. So we really want to remind folks that self-care is very, very important. And we'll talk about some ways um, to implement that into your life today. So one really amazing practice that I'm sure you've all heard of a little bit is mindfulness. So mindfulness is about being in the present moment, right? A lot of times when we're stressed, where we're feeling down, it's because we're either thinking of the future and worrying about what's gonna happen, or we're thinking about the past, right? What we didn't get done, what we did do that went wrong um, and worrying about that. So mindfulness is about being in the moment at that time. And you can see on the screen, there's so many different ways to practice mindfulness. And we'll talk about some of those and what that looks like. So mindfulness is a concept um, that really has roots in Buddhism. It's also in yoga, but there's a lot of different religions and practices and cultures that have this um, idea of being in the moment and being present. So these are just some benefits of mindfulness um, to help you make sure you prioritize it in your life. Um, so it really helps your overall well-being. Right, it helps you um, better manage challenges as they come up. We always want to be more resilient and more flexible um, in our lives. And mindfulness is one of the ways to do that. It helps us be fully engaged in the activities that we're actually doing. Right, so even when we are not um, purposely practicing mindfulness, it helps us be more mindful in everything that we do. It improves our relationships. It decreases stress, anxiety, and depression. And then it also has physical benefits because our, our mental health is so, so tied to our physical health. So it lowers blood pressure, 
It reduces chronic pain. It helps our sleep, which we all need help with, I'm sure. And it also relieves gastrointestinal difficulties. All right. So one of the most popular um, mindfulness techniques is meditation, right? And for a lot of us, meditation feels very, very difficult. It's hard to um, imagine taking time out of our day to basically do nothing, right? And that's, that's kind of what it seems like when we're so busy. Um, so I encourage you to even just take five minutes, two minutes out of your day, maybe in the morning, in the afternoon to practice this. Um, practicing it a little bit at a time um, is a great way to start off, you know, setting an hour out for yourself to meditate when you're first getting started is pretty daunting. Um, and it's also really hard to take that hour out of your day. So even just take two minutes um, each morning or each evening to practice this. So there's a couple different levels um, of meditation and mindfulness practice and some um, different ways to look at this. So one could be focusing on your senses and focusing on the world around you, right? So kind of taking a second to look around your room, look around your space and really just take notice. Right? It could be taking notice of all the colors in the room and counting the colors or going through the rainbow, right? How many colors of the rainbow can you find? It could be trying to engage all of your senses, right? So I could sit here and think, what are the things that I see? What are the things that I hear? What are the things that I smell, feel, taste? Go through it like that. Another way would be to focus a little bit more inward, right? I can try to ignore all the things happening outside my window or in the office behind me and focus on my specific body. And I could focus on maybe the way my, my hair feels, still even a little bit wet from this morning, the way my body feels on the chair, what's happening in my stomach, is it grumbling, focusing on my breathing, focusing on my thoughts. Right, so focusing completely inward. And then kind of the next step and the harder step for a lot of people um, is having a singular focus, right? So pushing away all those thoughts of the outside world and the internal body, right? So I'm going to ignore the fact that this chair is a little scratchy. I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to think about my hair itching me. I'm going to focus just on my breath or just on a, a single mantra or a single focus. And that can be difficult. Um, so you wanna be patient with yourself. Um, your mind will drift, it absolutely will um, in any of those activities. And you just kind of gently redirect your thoughts back and then it'll get easier and easier the more that you practice it. So um, I think those concepts of meditation are great and I absolutely encourage people to do them, but they're hard sometimes to implement in our lives. So I have some suggestions for a more creative, more active mindfulness. Um, and I'm gonna show you kind of two different um, things we want to engage in. One, things that energize us, things that bring us joy and light. And then the other side, things that bring us calm and peace. We want to engage in both of those things. Um, so these examples are actually all examples I got from different people in my life. So as a social worker, I have a lot of friends that are also social workers engaging in a lot of things for other people. Um, and I wanted to see what do they do to take care of themselves? And these are some examples of things that brought them joy. So hopefully they are things that will work for you as well reading, right? Fully absorbing yourself in a book. Um, that friend who mentioned this said, you know, she spends all day talking about really difficult subjects. So she likes to read really kind of like silly, easy, nonsense books. It could be cooking or baking. Spending time in nature is really, really wonderful for your mental health. Um, doing a home improvement project, right? Getting out and moving, being creative in that way. Exercise is a great mindfulness technique, right? It's basically meditation in motion. If you're like me, when you're running, I am only focusing on breathing, right? I'm focusing on not dying. 
Um, I can't really think about anything else. Um, and that's, that's mindfulness, right? It could be playing music, it could be dancing um, or painting. I have a, a painting um, behind me here that I did. And that was a, a great night of bringing joy to myself and some calm. So along with those things that spark you and bring you energy, you also want things that calm you, right? And bring you peace. It could be making sure your physical space is actually warm and inviting, right? If you're going to your bedroom in the evening and you're looking for that to be a peaceful space, does it actually look peaceful? Does it actually feel peaceful, right? Or is there a lot of clutter around? And what can you do to fix that? Gardening is a great tool for a lot of people. Um, one friend of mine mentioned doing beauty or skincare routines um, and you know, doing a face mask or doing her nails. And it wasn't, you know, for the beauty aspect, it was because it forced her to be still. She couldn't do anything else if she had a face mask on and her nails wet. Um, so that was the time where she physically forced herself um, to just sit there and be still and be quiet. And that time for silence is really important. So have some time in your day where you don't have the radio on, you don't have music, you don't have an audiobook, you don't have people talking to you, you just have your thoughts. You can really find the peace in that. Um, painting or drawing or coloring are all things that are really great. Um, I personally use those to find some calm and peace. Along with all those activities, one idea is reframing unhelpful thoughts, right? We all have these thoughts in our head that pop up um, and sometimes we can run with them or we can push them aside. So our thoughts are really, really powerful. I'm sure you've all heard that before, um, but we, you know, we hear our own voice more than we hear anybody else's. So if that voice is negative and that voice is talking about, you know, bad things or focusing on negative things, um, that's gonna have an impact in our lives. So try not to dwell on those negative thoughts Look at the big picture, right? Don't let small issues or things that went wrong um, magnify. I think one of the, the big, 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 biggest examples I have of this is when I was in school, if I took a test, if it was a hundred questions and there was one question that I didn't know, I would say, I don't think I did well on the test, right? I was focusing on one tiny little issue, um, not the bigger picture. So don't focus on that one question, focus on the whole test. Remember that things aren't black and white, right? There's a lot of gray area in life. We don't always want to assume negative outcomes. It's really, really easy to jump to the what ifs, the, um, what you should have done, what's going to happen, and I'm um, assuming those things are going to be bad or negative or the worst case scenario. Um, so as much as possible, not assuming that, right? What's, what, what's it going to hurt if we assume the best thing's going to happen or the best outcome um, is going to come out? And don't personalize, right? Sometimes things happen and we think it was our fault or we think, you know, this person must be mad at us. Um, or something is about us, well, it's really probably not, right? That person was probably just tired. They had their own stuff going on um, and this really wasn't about us. So try not to personalize things. And lastly, set some healthy boundaries. And I know this is very difficult for a lot of people um, that are helpers or caregivers, but let people know in your life if you can't handle something, right? Take a step back, practice saying no, uh, the more you um, say no and just fill your life up with the things that you really want, the better. Um, and of course, you know, all of these tools are great, <laughs> um, but sometimes we all need some extra help, right? We need um, some extra services. And these are some ways to know if maybe you need a little bit of extra help beyond these tools. So if you're having trouble with your appetite, you're you know, losing weight because you're not able to eat, or the opposite, you're overeating, gaining a lot of weight, a lot more um, than normal, having a lot of trouble sleeping, or the opposite, you're sleeping too much and you're not able to get out of bed and you're missing responsibilities because of that. 
If you're starting to use alcohol or other drugs or prescriptions, not as directed in order to feel better, or you're using gambling or shopping to feel better and that's causing financial trouble. If you're just having trouble managing your responsibilities because of how bad you feel, right? Sometimes when we're having a mental health issue, just getting out of bed, just brushing your teeth can be really, really challenging. And if those everyday things are starting to become a challenge for you, you probably need some extra help. Um, or if you're noticing that your personal relationships are becoming really strained, there's a lot of tension um, due to these issues. And of course, if you're ever thinking about hurting yourself, please reach out for help. So these are some resources um, to reach out to, you know, of course, friends, family, spiritual leader. If you're having um, an issue, you can always talk to your primary care doctor, um, even if it's more of a mental health issue, right, they can help coordinate something. We have um, Every Mind um, here in Montgomery County. They have a wonderful hotline. We also have the Mental Health Association of Maryland is a great resource. Um, 211 is a statewide resource related to mental health. And then we also have the National Alliance on Mental Health. In addition to all of those, you also have the Elder Safe Center here as a resource. So as I said, my name is Sydney. You can always reach out to me or anyone else on my team, as well as reach out to our helpline. So thank you all so much. Sydney, that was an amazing presentation and very inspiring too. So thank you very much. Thank I have you. a follow-up question. Um, I hear from a lot of caregivers and sometimes what challenges them is their home environment. You know, they either don't have time to keep it as clean and tidy as they'd like, or they're sharing the home environment with others that, you know, they may not be the tidiest people. How can um, a caregiver have a space in the home that could be a go-to place for them to meditate, reflect, or even just have some downtime? Yeah, that's a great question. And something that I hear a lot as well from folks in my life that are caregivers, right? Trying to find that space, maybe where they can be alone um, or not be as reminded about all their other duties. So that's, I think, one thing, right? Have it be a space that's private as much as possible and not a space that's near all the papers so the things you have to do or not near calendars or things like that. It could be as simple as a chair, having a weighted blanket. It could be changing other senses in the room, right? So having a candle that you light and while that candle is lit, that's your time to just close your eyes and be by yourself for a second. It could be, you know, getting up a little bit earlier, maybe than the other people in the house and having that cup of coffee alone in the kitchen, right? Where you just have that sense of peace. I have a friend who is a brand new mom during the pandemic. Her and her husband are both working from home with a new baby, trying to figure out life. Um, and she has set aside a half an hour every single night to read in bed alone. And she has set that her time um, to have that quiet space in her room. So it's kind of just carving out those pieces, right? I know my mom as a caregiver, she carves out the time when she takes my stepdad to therapy. She sits in the car, she puts on a book and just relaxes. Doesn't take any phone calls. She doesn't do anything else for him. She takes that time for her. Mm. Beautiful. I really like the way you describe that. And those examples um, were very helpful. So thank you. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, we've reached the end of our time together today. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share um, with our audience before we go? Yeah, I mean, I would just encourage folks to always reach out for services, right? Caregivers are incredible. You're doing so, so much but make sure that you're utilizing all of the services that we have for you as well. Um, so reach out to, to Lily and all the services she has um, and also the Elder Safe Center. You have our helpline. Um, it is 301-816-5099 and we're always happy to provide resources or referrals.
Wonderful. And I will include the helpline phone number in the description where people found this episode. So okay. thank you again. Thank you so much. You have been watching Engage at Home. I remind you all to stay calm. Thank you.